Welcome to the class students. Today we are solving some other problems on KP's coefficient on moments. Uh, here in this class we will solve the KP's coefficient problems for discrete case and as well as continuous case. For your exam point of view you may get this type of problem for 10 marks and this is very very important topic. So, let's solve the problem first. Take down the problem first. Okay. First problem is calculate KP's coefficient that is Carl Pearson's coefficient. Calculate KP's coefficient of skewness for the data. For the data, following data. Here this is value. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42. Next frequencies 4, 7, 9, 18, 15, 10 and 5. So to find out KP's coefficient we have a formula that is KP's coefficient is KP's coefficient formula is x bar minus z divided by sigma. x bar is mean, arithmetic mean, z means mode and sigma is the standard deviation. So for the given data, for the given problem, we have to calculate all, the, all these three things. Then we can find out the KP's coefficient. Let's solve one by one. First we have to calculate x bar value. x bar is equal to summation of fx divided by n. So this value we consider it as x and frequency is as f. Find out f into x. f into x is 24, 84, 162, 432, 450, 360, 210. Next fx square, f into x square. It is 144, 1008, 2916, 10368, 13500, 12960, 8820. So after finding this, take the summations of frequency. Frequency summation is 68. Summation of fx, it is 1722. Summation of fx square. You know how to find fx square? 49716. So x bar is equal to 1722 divided by 68. So x bar is equal to 25.32. Okay. Next find out the sigma. It is summation of fx square divided by n minus summation of fx by n the whole square the square root. This is summation of 49716 by 68 minus summation fx by n already we have calculated it is 25.32 the whole square and sigma value is it is square root of 731.11 minus 641.10 and sigma is equal to 9.487. Lastly, we have to find out the mode value that is Z. Z is, Z is, we have to find out the mode value. We have to see the maximum frequency in the frequency column. Here 18 is the maximum frequency. The, for this corresponding X value, okay, for this 18 maximum frequency, for the maximum frequency corresponding x value, we can take it as a mode value. Here 18 is the maximum frequency. The corresponding value in the x column that is 24. So our mode is 24. Now substitute all these things in KPS coefficient. It is 25.32 minus 24 divided by 9.487 and KPS coefficient is equal to 0.139. Since this is positive, since this is positive, we have to write the commit. Whether they ask or not, we have to write the commit. See here in KP's coefficient, it is positive 0.139. Therefore, 
it is kps coefficient is positively positively skewed distribution positively skewed distribution here we got positive value so that the given data is positively skewed distribution let's solve another problem next problem for this again we have to calculate kps coefficient so this is a class interval 10 to 19 20 to 29 30 to 39 40 to 49 50 to 59 next frequencies 4 5 12 7 and 4 You just see the class interval they have given. It is inclusive type of class intervals. For our uh, calculations, we have to make this cal. Uh, we have to make this continuous. That is exclusive type. Then we should go for the further procedures. So, since this is uh, here, we are calculating k p s coefficient. We know that we have to calculate x bar, mod, and the standard deviation values. First. we will write the new class interval okay new class interval first we will write so for that here we have to subtract 0.5 to the lower limit then we should add 0.5 to the upper limit it is 9.5 to 19.5 19.5 to 29.5 29.5 to 39.5 39.5 to 49.5, 49.5 to 59.5. Next, we have to find the x that is midpoint. Here, for this, the midpoint is we have to add these two upper limit and the lower limit value. We should add. Then we should divide this by two so that you will get the midpoint. Midpoint values I am writing 24.5, 34.5. 44.5 54.5 here we are having x value in a points if you go for the direct calculation it will be difficult so let's go for step deviation method so i am taking the deviation d is equal to x minus a by c your a is equal to 14.5 and c is the width of the class interval that is 10 so that this will become 0 1 2 3 and 4 next find out fd and fd dash fd square so that the table will be completed first find out fd this is d d into f frequency so first find out f into d f into d i am writing it is 0 5 24 21 And sixteen summation of F D is equal to sixty six. Next F D square to find out F D square F D into D we should take. We have to take the product of F D column and the D column so that you will get F D square. It is five forty eight sixty three sixty four. Summation of F D square is equal to one eighty and your n value is equal to thirty two. Let's find out one by one. First, we have to find out the x bar. X bar is equal to a plus summation f x divided by sorry f d by n into c. Since here we are using the step deviation, so for to calculate x bar, this is the formula because here we have subtracted a there. Here we are adding the a value. Here. And uh, for this x in this x bar, your uh, we have divide the c value that is width of the class interval. Then we are multiplying the c value. So this is a is 14.5 plus 66 by 32 into 10, and our x bar is equal to 35.125. After simplification, it is. 35.125. Next, find out the z value that is mode is L plus f m minus f one by 2 f m minus f one minus f two into c. 
here fm is the highest frequency here it is 12 so i am blocking this one this fm this is fm this is f1 and this is f2 we have to consider the new class interval for l so it is 29.5 plus fm is equal to 12 minus 5 divided by 2 into 12 minus 5 minus 7 into 10 so this is 29.5 plus 5.833 and z is equal to 35.333 so this is our z value. Next we have to calculate standard deviation that is sigma. It is summation of fd square by n minus summation fd by n the whole square. And this is fd square value here this is, this is 180 the square root is there divided by 32 minus fd is fd is 66 divided by n is equal to 32 here we have to multiply c because we are using the step deviation so it should be multiplied by 10 and this is square root of 1.372 into 10 this is 1.1713 into 10 and sigma is equal to 11.713 this is our standard deviation value next i am writing kp's coefficient formula this is x bar minus z divided by sigma your x bar is equal to 35.125 mode is 35.333 divided by 11.713 and this is minus 0.0177 so kp's coefficient is equal to this negative here we got negative value in KP's coefficient. Therefore, it is a negatively, it is a negatively skewed distribution. Negatively skewed distribution. In examination, you will get this type of problem for 10 marks. Okay. Uh, whether it can be a new, you have to write new interval or not. But this type of problem will be 10 marks and the last commit, last commit part will also carry marks that carries 1 marks. That is also very, very important. Commit, if you are not right the commit, you will get only 9 marks for this problem. You just go through this, uh, your midpoints and your uh, uh, calculations that is uh, summations and all will carry 2 marks. This uh, formula will carry 1 marks, answer will carry 1 marks. Totally 6 marks, 7 marks, 8 marks, 9 marks and this will be for 10 marks. Together this co concept, this KP's coefficient is for 10 marks problem for your examination. And this is very very important concept. Please follow this one. Okay. Thank you.